Greetings, Aries Rising and Aries Moon people. This is your monthly astrological overview for March 2017. And a quick reminder for you guys that, remember, these monthly horoscopes are talking about the broad, sweeping, seasonal shifts, like the big, big themes that go on for the month. When it comes to smaller angles and things that happen on more of a daily or weekly basis, check back for your weekly horoscopes. The first half of them is always about astrology exclusively, and then the second half includes the tarot, but there is something for everybody. And of course, if you ever want to get a session with me, you can always go to my website, integrativemysticism.com. So what is going on with March? Well, March we've got an interesting month. It's so interesting that I'm actually doing this month a little bit differently. Um, because we have an unprecedented amount of planets moving through Aries, your sign. We're going to have Venus there, Mercury there, the Sun there, a new Moon there, and we've also got Uranus there. So this is going to be one of those months where all the planets are kind of grouped up in one spot, putting a huge focus there. Now, in the beginning of the month, we do have the beginning of, uh, or a restart, I guess you could say, of the Jupiter opposite Uranus angle. And that's going to be a theme that hits for about the first three weeks of the month, so it's a long-standing aspect. And this is between your sign, with Uranus there, and Jupiter, currently retrograde in your seventh house of partnerships. <clears throat> and whenever we have um, this, this kind of angle, it's actually really glorious, because Jupiter retrograde is talking about finding hidden treasures in your own backyard. Remember, we talked about that in the February horoscope, and that angle is still happening there. And so a big focus is on unexpected surprises, possibly even gifts, or breakthroughs coming with a romantic partner, a best friend, um, or somebody really, really close to you. This could be a wonderful, wonderful month for either healing or strengthening a relationship that may have dulled over the last few months. Because when Jupiter and Uranus oppose each other, we're seeing an opposite side or another side to this person we're dealing with. We're actually seeing a side of them that we either missed, or maybe this is a side of them that we never got to, knew, to know, but they're actually more compatible than, with us than the person that was being presented to us in the first place. Getting to know this close person much closer, or much better over this course of, you know, this period of time is actually going to be quite exhilarating. There could even be unexpected, you know, I guess you could say evolutions in a partnership or a one-on-one -on -one relationship in the first three weeks of this month as well. And this again has a lot to do with um, sort of a personality evolving on a certain issue in this connection. So it's actually a really nice time for close one-on-one -on -one relationships. Remember your best friend, BFF, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, business partner. We've got a, somebody evolving on a long-standing issue, but in the best of ways. Now, we do also have Venus turning retrograde in your sign um, on the fourth of the month, and it's going to be there all the way through the rest of the month. Now, Venus retrograde is a tricky, tricky devil to deal with because it's not like Mercury retrograde. A lot of people hear the word retrograde and they assume it means the same thing as Mercury retrograde, and that's just not true. Venus retrograde plays a bit more on our emotions, whereas Mercury retrograde plays more on communications of the mind. And when Venus is retrograde, wherever it is, in this case it's in your sign, there are three things to keep in mind. Venus retrograde tends to become dysfunctionally preoccupied with gratification, trust and insecurity, and temptation. And so this is going on in your sign. And so what happens during this time, it's very important to evaluate how we are connecting to people and finding out who is actually thinking of a bigger picture or knows how to play a longer game. Because with Venus, it rules our relationships and it rules our finances. So when it's in your sign retrograde, it's important to pay attention to when people we are close to, friends, family, lovers, or again, anyone who are, we are handling money with or our job, are actually good at paying attention to the long haul as opposed to focusing on what can feel good in the immediate. Because sometimes when we talk about temptation and trust, sometimes people will focus a lot of energy on trying to feel better in the moment. They'll be tempted to take unnecessary risks or perhaps, you know, do very selfish things in order to feel a sense of relief. 
Um, Venus retrograde can talk about, you know, issues where, again, insecurities can get played on during this time. And you may notice that in your closer circles, people are becoming more insecure and might be actually going out of their way to, again, instead of think things out, talk things out, they're acting out during this time. And you've got to pay attention to where, you know, yeah, it might be a signal that somebody's unhappy, but they're not necessarily coping correctly, you know, because again, sometimes people will focus on trying to get relief in the moment as opposed to pay attention what the, to what the bigger picture is. Luckily, you know, Venus will be leaving this area at the end of the month and it'll go into a much softer space for you, but I am gonna, you know, I, you know me, I don't pull punches. It's just important to know. Now, on the nice side of things, though, almost right after Mercury, Venus goes retrograde, excuse me, we've got Mars moving into Taurus, your earned income sector, where he will stay from the first week of the month all the way into April. And it's going to be boosting your income quite a bit, because whenever Mars goes into a financial sector, we are working double time, overtime, and making a hell of a lot more money. And this could actually be really good news, especially for those of you who've been feeling like maybe business has been dwindling um, in the past couple of months, things have been a bit slow, maybe we're not getting the hours or the sales that we've been hoping for, or we're just looking to try and find a way to either make up for lost time or just make a bunch of money really quickly, Mars in your earned income sector is one of the best things you could have for that. You will be pulling some late nights, and again, that sweet overtime pay will be yours, but if you are willing to cash in on it, it's going to fatten your wallet considerably. We also have, towards the, you know, again, the end of the first week, beginning of the second week, we've got a full moon in Virgo, in your sixth house of work, schedule, and reputation. And this is talking about changing the way you want people to see you this month. That's a big focus. How do we want to change our reputation, whether it's updating our resume, changing what people can expect from us, or how people see us. Sometimes it's important to get things away from our reputation or not be seen a certain way because, well, maybe we're known for things that we don't want really people to know us for. It might not even necessarily be anything bad. It could be a good quality gone bad. If somebody knows us for always being dependable, or always being generous, or always being accommodating, sometimes that can make people treat us like a pushover. Sometimes that makes the boss assign us all kinds of duties that nobody else wants, and neither do we for that matter. Or sometimes we have a reputation that we just want to get rid of because we're trying to turn over a new leaf ourselves. And it's finally going to sink in with people this month that this is the new you and this is how they need to see you and interact with you if you take advantage of the energy of this full moon that's coming on the 10th and the 11th of this month. It's overnight. We also have Mercury and the Sun moving into your sign at the end of the second week of the month, going into week three, where they will be for the, you know, vast majority of the rest of the month. And what happens with Mercury in your sign is that this is a time to be speeding up productivity in your life. Mercury is, again, I always say it's the shot of caffeine, it's the shot of espresso. And so anything that's been taking too long uh, to get off the ground, whether it's, um, maybe it's a personal project, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's travel, maybe it's an opportunity to go back to school, or maybe it's just, you know, we're just having a hard time getting people to finally get the let out, this is what you want, because Mercury tends to, again, hurry things up, not necessarily to a forced fruition, but more likely it's going to help people actually have a bigger sense of urgency with you. If you feel like you've been, you know, you've been procrastinating or other people have been procrastinating, people have been highly distractible, or again, there are just some priorities in your life that are just taking too long to get started or taking too long to finish, Mercury going through your sign, especially in the last two weeks of the month, is talking about not only wrapping things up, but getting them done even much more quickly than you would expect. So whatever's still hanging out there, whatever is still on that to-do list, whatever is just collecting cobwebs, even though it needs to be taken care of um, with you or with anyone else, is going to get, again, that urgency boost that we're looking for. The sun is going through your sign, again, in the last two weeks of the month and going into April as well. And the sun in your sign is actually a really nice blessing because it is helping out with that, again, that social respect 
and that reputational shift we've been looking for. Because the sun does make us more popular, but it also at the same time brings us better quality of relationships and communications with people. If you are trying to improve on relationships, heal dysfunctions, or maybe even just kind of get rid of old communication issues with close people in your life, the sun is going to be drawing them there. This is also going to be nice for a lot of you folks who've been looking to try and get more out of people or get more time with people, especially if you've been feeling like that connectivity has been dwindling. So we really have a nice last two weeks of the month. You know, actually the whole month is nice if we can just get past that Venus retrograde. Towards the end of the month, we do have a new moon in your sign, and it is your birthday new moon. It's your once a year birthday new moon. What are you trying to get started? What are you trying to get ready to go in your life? Is it something that, you know, are you looking to start a new job? Are you looking to make a, a move of some kind? Are you trying to go back to school, manifest a new loving relationship, or maybe even meet new people? This new moon is going to basically say whatever you put forth into being in the last week and a half of the month will most likely come into being and get a chance to take a spin uh, as we go into April. I will say, however, with Venus retrograde, you know, it's important when it comes to relationships not to make anything official. Um, during this time. If it can't wait for the, Merc for the Venus retrograde to be over, then that is a sign that this relationship might not be ready anyway. But I would say that if you still want to start a new dating scenario, that is perfectly okay. And then we can just work on maybe doing something a bit more official as we get into the end of April, or even the beginning of April when Venus moves into a different part of your chart. Finally, at the end of the month, we've got Mercury entering Taurus, your earned income sector. And again, we've got the benefit of Mars giving you more money and more workflow and again, more overtime, more work hours than you can handle. And Mercury is speeding up productivity to actually be hurrying things along in terms of outstanding business, but also hurrying up the opportunity for progress in this area. If you need to wrap up interviews, if you feel like maybe interview communications are taking too long, again, you're trying to start a new job, or you feel like maybe communications with uh, peers and coworkers and clients just isn't going as smoothly as we think, Mercury, again, at least for the rest of this month and for the first week of April, is definitely going to be trying to put that through an immediate correction. And again, it might actually be making things a lot more smooth. So that is your forecast, Aries. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. Don't forget to come back for the weekly horoscopes as well. And if you ever want to get a session with me, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.